Okay, so the Snyder Cut is coming very soon, 18th of March. So we are revisiting all of Snyder's DC films in the DCU. We did Man of Steel last week, which was a, a very good conversation. And this week we are talking Batman vs Superman. The ultimate that, edition. The ultimate edition with 30 minutes of sweet, sweet extra footage. You joke, but it's actually so essential to the story. Yes, but the story's still ridiculous. Yeah. Anyways, uh, what do you think of Batman vs Superman, the ultimate edition? What's your summary? And this is going to sound quite controversial, but I actually don't mind the movie. Well, that's the highest praise a film can get. That you don't mind <laughs> I it. honestly, I don't mind it. I don't think it's awful. It's definitely... Well, there you go. <laughs> it's definitely not as good as Man of Steel. But yep. I don't think it's as bad as everyone makes it out to be. What I would say about it, it's interesting. And going back and watching this again, uh, it is broken. The oh, film yeah. is completely broken from top to bottom. There is so many issues with it. But I do kind of like it. Yeah. And do you know why I kind of like it? Because it's a big swing. He's gone, fuck it. I'll, I will go for it. I'm going to throw in everything. I'm going to throw in the death of Superman. Why not? I'm going to... Jimmy Olsen, in he comes. I'm going to kill him straight away. You know, this Batman, he's going to kill two dozen people. But, I'm, you know, it's a big swing. There's, it, There is something creative going on. And I would say something like for the Dark World, like on a technical aspect, is probably the better film. But I much prefer this because at least it's interesting and it's creative and it's doing something. It's just not a generic film. I would rather watch this film than I would say a lot of MCU films. Not because I enjoy it more, but just because I watch it and I go, there's a lot of stuff in this. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of there's stuff. So, there's so much in this. And it's just a huge swing. It's a swing and a miss, but I appreciate the swing. That's a very, very cool analysis. Yeah. I like and what that. I would say is like, whenever I do, I've, I've spoken a lot about Batman vs Superman on my YouTube channel. Uh, and not very well. And... I, I get this out there immediately because I'm going to rip into this film quite a bit. And a lot of people say, you know, it's like it's such a real film. It's the realest, most gritty film in all the superhero genre. No, it's not. It definitely so it's it a, definitely isn't. No. It's a it's a real big, silly film. you got Batman waving around his bat brand while he's got Lex Luthor pinned against the wall, you know. You've got batman crawling across the ceiling like he's in the fucking exorcist clark kench <laughs> jumping into baths fully clothed water spilling out to the side you got this huge toothy baby jumping around buildings creating huge explosions and superman's punching him in the face and i just think what a silly mad film this is this isn't like real and gritty even though it's trying to go for that as well when you know you got this bearded batman who's waving his bat brand about i just I don't take the film seriously on a real aspect, on a, yeah, this is dark and gritty like The Dark Knight. I think in particular, the final third of this movie, similarly to Man of Steel, is where most of its problems lie. I think the ending of this film is quite shit, and I'm quite... I know Snyder has this this thing where he likes to just... He thinks, bigger is better. I know you also uh, feel the yeah, same bigger way. bigger is always better. Um, bigger is always better. But Snyder seems to do that in every one of his movies, and I always feel that's where most of the time he falls short in the ending of his movies. But no, I mean, I honestly think this is actually a, not a very good film. That's a complete lie. I actually <laughs> think this is quite an enjoyable film up to the part where you get the whole Martha situation. And then from then on, it becomes a bit mental, a bit shit. Well, see, the thing is, the film was going for a good two hours... And then finally the title of the film happens and Batman and Superman fight. And then that ends. And then I looked how long was left. And there was still 45 minutes of film left. And it's same with Man of Steel. You do the Smallville fight. That ends. There's still a good 30 to 40 minutes left of that film. And you're like, God, is this ever going to end? It's funny, it's like... funny actually, right? Because it actually follows quite similar beats to Man of Steel with regards to... We both said last week that we both prefer the Smallville fight to the Metropolis battle. And I'm yeah. assuming you're with me, whereas I much prefer the fight between the two of them as opposed to the fight with Doomsday. Like, that goes uh, without question. Let's get on to the fight then. Because the fight, it 
it, it okay. Well, for, for it to work, this film it's it's a fantastic looking film. Like everything is yeah, it looks amazing incredible. looking. Yeah. And this is kind of another analogy I have. If you look at all the sequences on their own, they are all brilliant. Like they all look great. But you piece them all together and you realise everything just completely falls apart. So if you just watch Batman Superman fight, it's a cool looking scene. But then when you think about the film as a whole, the fight makes no sense. It's completely avoidable. It, it looks kind of cool, but it's not that good. Like, it just basically doesn't make any sense. It's a five minute fight. You know, and I have questions like, why did Batman put his spear in the middle of that hole? You know, he saw how that fight with Superman and Zod went. He could have ended up miles away. And I would say Batman got very, very lucky to win that fight. He was lucky Superman decided to grab him and fly him up to a couple of buildings over exactly where he put that spear. And, you know, he has his kryptonite gas launcher, which it all looks cool when he fires it. Why doesn't he have one with multi rounds? (laughs) And then the point that annoys me the most is okay i can accept superman fell for the oldest trick in the book the old kryptonite gas in the face you know and he's a bit he's a bit taken aback by it that's fine then he and he starts to get his strength back uh and then he 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 gives uh batman a good old punch and then he watches him slowly reload the gas canister and i've gone back and i've watched it takes batman a full 10 seconds to reload his gas canister and then you watch it and you go, what's Superman going to do? He just flies straight back into it. Why the fuck did he yeah, just fly I, do you know what? Funny it? enough, funny enough, I actually watched that bit this morning and I completely agree. When it was happening, I was thinking he could have dealt with that very, very quickly. He did wait a long fucking time for that. Like, And yeah. he, he did that because the fight needs to continue. Like everything in this, it just goes on because it just needs to continue because the fight needs to, to keep going. So he needed to get hit. You know, it just everything serves to always continue the film and the runtime. One of the good parts of the fight I do like is when Batman's punching him in the face and then he can't hurt him anymore and like he looks scared of what the consequence is now, now that Superman's just bearing down on him. Obviously then the fight stops with Save Martha. So oh, what did you so I, I awful. Think, at the end they like so much has been said about this i don't think there's much more. No, we're not going to go mad into this no. yeah but for me this is all i have to add about that and what doesn't make the most sense to me is how doesn't batman know this already he's the world's greatest detective what in 18 months he didn't realize this he didn't realize he has a mum, or that her name's martha yeah, but what reason would he have to to research his mother yeah, but why would he not? Re- he, he wants to kill this man. Don't forget. Why would he not research him? Yeah, as of much course. As he but could? we 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 can also appreciate the fact that Batman is extremely unstable during this film. This is not the Batman we know. The smart, level-headed Batman. This guy is fucking branding people left and right. This guy doesn't care about this guy's history with regards to his family or Smallville. He just knows this guy is an enemy. And he could wipe out planet Earth and he needs to stop him. He doesn't care about his mother. He wouldn't research that shit. What I would say is, for the world's greatest detective, he doesn't do much detecting in this film. Because he's got he's lost the plot, mate. He's mental. He doesn't he's not he's no longer a detective. He's just an absolute nutter. He well, can climb on walls. Do you want to talk about Batman then? I was gonna say, first of all, Affleck looks great, doesn't he? I love, it's like I love the best him. he's ever looked. I love him. I I, I love I love fantastic. him as Bruce Wayne. I love him as Batman. I love him in his his main suit. I love him in his uh, Dark Knight Returns suit. I just love everything about Batman, apart from the fact that he wields guns. But everything else, I really enjoy about him. He he has free rules, Batman. No drinking, no guns, no killing, and he breaks all free, which is fine. If there's some sort of explanation for it, but this is just who this Batman is, it seems. I, I'd argue that there is kind of an explanation. You, like I said a minute ago, like you can see that he's become extremely unstable. Jeremy Irons says it multiple times to him, like you know, you're feeling the rage and all this sort of stuff, you know. But that's kind of all he does. What I would say about Batman in this is basically the film can't decide who he is. Because they're treating him like a new character, like a, like this is a new superhero. But then the film is reminding you that he's been around for twenty years. 
So Clark Kent is like, who's this Batman guy? This is weird. And I'm going, I'm thinking, but if you do some research, you would realise this guy's been operating for 20 years and maybe he isn't the bad guy. But everyone around him seems to be treating him as like a new character. And this Batman guy has come along and look what he's doing to people. Yeah, but there's not like a point in it where they go, well, hold on. He was, you know, they could say he wasn't like this before when he was operating now he's come back and become more brutal but it just seems like everyone's acting like he is a new character but then yeah the film just says he's been around for 20 years no i i i i i I, once again i i get the impression that what they were going for like i said already already was that he's operating in completely new ways like once again alfred says to him like oh you're branding people now and then that woman says as well doesn't she when when clark kent goes to speak to the uh, the wife of the guy that got put in prison and she says about yeah. how we've been branded, and that's essentially a death sentence. Like, who is he to determine, like, who lives and who dies sort of thing. I, I actually quite like that. I quite like Side that note. route. Side note, he was, your husband was a human trafficker, love. Of course. And and you're trying to, yeah, just, that part, like, I, I kind of get what they were going for, but I was like, perhaps if his crime wasn't so horrific, yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. care more. Yeah. But his crime was horrible. And then Clark Kent's like, hmm... Perhaps you went too far with this guy by branding him. No, fuck that guy. I think we need to talk about... I, everyone's, everyone's spoken about this, but... He kills at least a couple of dozen of people in this film. I estimated. Yeah. At least a couple of dozen. Yeah, particularly in that warehouse scene. Yeah. He murdered everyone. And he made sure he murdered everyone in that scene. Yeah. Especially the scene, you know, when he's... Uh, the car chase scene. Which, again, both of them are good sequences... But then, when you stop to think about how they're operating within the film, they, 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 they're suddenly they're not good. In like, so talking like the car scene, he, he's chasing after these guys with kryptonite. Then uh, Superman stops him. What Superman don't care doesn't care about the guy who was just wielding a fucking bazooka. Yeah, that that, that of yeah. not interest to yeah, it. Yeah, that really really takes me out. I, I once again I noticed that when I was watching it last night, like. He just turns a corner and randomly Superman's just standing in front of the Batmobile. Yeah. Like, what about the... Yeah, that I agree. That, that it, it, Tonally, that's all wrong. That part was completely yeah, all wrong. It, yeah. Like, Superman knows he's, he's he is stopping criminals. That is what he, that is what he is doing. But he's, he's not liking the way he is doing it. Yeah. So what? He's not interested in the lorry where there was at least three or four goons who all had guns and bazookas. And he's like, no, no, no. I'll stop Batman and then I'll fly away. This film really should have been probably three movies. I feel like there's probably three films going on in one. Yes, there's a lot of catch up to be done. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if it's Snyder or if it's studio interference, but they're trying to make, I wrote down, they're trying to do, uh, they're trying to do so many comic stories. So they're they're trying to do a Dark Knight Returns story. They're trying to do, you know, obviously a Batman film. Death of Superman to try and do a Justice League prequel and a setup for future films. Like you've got, you know, not just the Justice League in the email, alluding to a Robin is dead, alluding to the past things that have happened. You're also got Thomas and Martha Wayne who were uh, who had Jeffrey Dean Morgan and I forget the late lady from Walking Dead. Walking Dead. You've you've made major casting in that to hint to perhaps a Flashpoint story. There's just there is just so much. You're introducing Lex Luthor. You're introducing Wonder Woman. It, there's just like we said, there is just so much in this film. There is just it's a big swing and it's a big miss. It, I think a Man of Steel sequels the, the film they should have done. I think really what they should have done is they should have character. They should have made a Man of Steel sequel and then they should have made a Batman film. Kind of how I feel that the film should have went if you were to make it work. You should have had something like. Superman working for the government. Yeah. Because you do get that scene at the end of Man of Steel where they're like, how are you not going to act against our interests? And you can just start this film by saying, yeah, he decided that actually to stop all everyone so against me and I- I'm now just working for the government because I'm just trying to do right. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to do the best thing. You know, he's being naive. And then they're saying, right, you need to go to stop this Batman guy. What he's doing is way out of his sort of pay grade he's not you know he shouldn't be doing this and then you start the film from there and then batman can have his problems with him from metropolis and do it like that i love the opening scene of this film 
But what a great opening scene. Incredible. And I wrote here that it's such a creative and clever way to talk about the problems with the previous film and turn that into, you know, a storytelling mechanism. I think that's a really clever idea. What a cool idea. And he, and he's running around like as Bruce Wayne, he's not got his gadgets. And when he's running into all that dust and debris, that's brilliant. it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's fantastic. Everyone else running the other way and he's just running into that debris. I think that's phenomenal. What a great shot that is. It does make me laugh though, that all the workers in his building were just watching yeah. The terraform <laughs> machine. Why were they not leaving? Yeah, like it just, it just really like I, I, I went back and I paused it. People were working behind him. There's like people on computers tapping away, <laughs> and I, and like he looks out the window. The terraform machine has killed every building like, that was in within this radius. They're the only one left, and like the glass is breaking. And he's like, right, Bruce's on the phone. We're all gonna leave. Yeah. What? Some guys go like, No, no. I've got you know. I've got I've got a big spreadsheet to get through yeah. today. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that the ending of this film when they make it so clear that like oh yeah this island ha- is completely in it there's no one on it or thank god yeah. it's night time most people have, are home from work now like it's just ridiculous yeah, what, like, is yeah, that yeah. what what happens what so uh, where, before obviously we had lockdowns what when uh, five o'clock hit London just become a ghost town did it is <laughs> yeah. that all that happened you don't go out after five yeah <laughs> yeah after, and what is that why so many people died in Metropolis because it was a Thursday at 4.30 <laughs> So no one had got home yet. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? it? That that just made me laugh, and that's parts I don't like. When then you're pandering, that stuff is does really take me out of it because I know they're talk. When they're doing that, you're talking directly to the audience. Absolutely, and you're saying you didn't like what happened last time. Don't worry, we've corrected that. Yeah. So despite all the destruction and damage, no one's dying. So don't worry. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about Lex Luthor. Let's. So. I have a few issues with Lex. I can I say something pretty. So, I always used to just. I always used to say like for the, the past two times I watched this film, I always said he didn't deserve all the flack he was getting. The script isn't good for his character. Blah 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 blah. I've completely changed my opinions on that now. I thought he was appalling, appalling. He's always got. He's always got his little sound effects. I'm going to edit in a little uh, sound effect montage. <laughs> but it's just bizarre he, he's built that character jesse eisenberg has built that they've all they've obviously said do it like this and he's done it like that and they've built the character around that but I've, I've I noticed here's 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 one major problem with his plan. So first of all, why does he need Batman? That's never established. Why is it Batman? He why is Batman needed to kill Superman for him? That doesn't make any sense. And do you want to know why? Because he's got a hard drive full of loads of super powered beings. Why doesn't he just get one of them? He could have easily convinced the Flash. I feel Aquaman would be happy to have a bar brawl with Superman. I reckon. <laughs> why could he have not got one of them? And what I hate about him, he's a bad guy who just has everything figured out. And why does he have everything figured out? Well, because the script needs him to. It, it doesn't, you know, Batman takes the kryptonite from him. Oh, well, that was part of his plan all along. It's like, but this doesn't make sense. He's just a villain who has every, everything is planned out meticulously somehow. And every eventuality he is already thought of. But it just doesn't make any sense. To be honest, why does he want Batman dead? Why? Why is that so key? And I, you know, do you know why it is? Because the film needs a reason to complete its title. Yeah. And I hate his hair because it's only there to be shaved off in the end. Agreed. That's only reason he has shoulder length hair. Agreed. Because then at the end they can be like, look, he's bald now, and now he's Lex. When um, I was watching it last night, um, you know that scene where he puts the sweet in that guy's mouth. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, you know that's you know that scene, right? They um, oh, that's another thing. Sorry about how this is a bizarre, silly film, yeah. and he's putting cherry sweets in a guy's mouth. Makes no sense. It's just so it's so odd, right? But like, I was watching it, and then I I forgot that like it it cuts away from that 
from that scene. Like, you know how it says something like, he's telling him what he wants. He's saying he wants access to the alien ship. He wants this. And then it cuts off and, like, it comes back. When it first cut off, I was like, oh, wow, in the Ultimate Edition, they've completely cut out the bit where he puts the sweet in the mouth. No, they didn't. It's still there. <laughs> it's awful. It's so awful. It just... The idea of Lex is... No, even though the Justice League can be chasing him at every time, trying to throw this man in jail, he still became the president of the United States. Yeah. Why? Because he's just that good. Yeah. He's just that smart. He is. He's got everything together. And this is something I don't like about Lex. He is insane. And I think, how the fuck is this guy running day to day? Like, how's he even putting his shoes on in the morning? Yeah. Because he's just. You know, he he does a speech and it's all about gods and stuff like this. Like you're not even making any sense. Yeah. Like h- how are you how are you doing all oh, this? Oh yeah. Not... That scene where he invites them all to the thing is so awful when he's doing his and, speech. Yeah. yeah. It, it, he's talking to all these people about his business and he's he's just talking about thunderbolts and Zeus and then he like screams, That's paradoxical. Yeah, 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 and then yeah, yeah. he says Thank you. And everyone's like, ha, 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 that's just Lex. And I'm like... Side note, the only person who does any um, detective detecting in this film is Lois Lane. And she's just running around with a Lex bullet. Yeah. She's like, who who sanctioned this Lex Luthor bullet? Who sanctioned it? Who do you think? <laughs> who do you think is behind it? And then you've got fucking Martian Manhunter, who's like, oh, not touching that. Why? I Get in the fight, Martian Manhunter. Is he, is he definitely Martian Manhunter? That's what they say, and that's a that's a thing that annoys me about the Doomsday fight. What's Martian Manhunter doing? <laughs> Get in the fucking fight! Well, hold on, we Hell don't know him. that he is Martian Manhunter. We don't know this. He he said he was gonna. Uh, I mean, I had I had some notes on Superman. I, I've got really nothing to say about him. He's a pretty nothing character yeah. in this film. His arc doesn't really very get expanded, stagnant. does it? Yeah, why does he hate Batman? Well, because he's doing bad stuff that he doesn't like. Like his motivation. I just don't believe his motivation yeah. to not like him. Yeah. And then the film has to make up a reason by going, oh, he has Martha. And it's like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, And then he go, he go, he goes to him and he's like, we need to talk. And then pushes him half a mile away. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. He literally fucking flies. <laughs> like... But it looks great, doesn't yeah. it? And that's the thing we always say, like the sequences all look great and it looks great. It looks cool. But then I think, you you're saying like there's no time, and then he's like, "Fucking have that." I I, I then... don't believe that Superman had any intention to hurt Batman, though. If that makes sense, he went in. Comp- yeah, but then okay, so he doesn't want to fight, but then he gives gives that up after what being hit by a couple of machine gun bullets ineffectively. That's enough to enrage him, and he's like, "Oh, we'll sod it then." Yeah, but he still was like holding back. Like if he wanted to end that fight, he could. As he says, if you were, if I wanted you dead, you'd be dead already, sort of thing. Yeah, he says two very Superman lines in this. If I wanted you dead, you'd be dead already, and I'll take you in without breaking you. <laughs> very Superman s lines. Yeah, the man of hope. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing. Set. There's one thing I noticed about this, and I'm going to edit this in again in the in the video. That did you notice? You know when he he walks up. You know, he's all depressed and he walks into the mountains and uh, he meets his dead, dead dad yeah. and he tells him a story about drowning horses and he's like, thank you, uh, I feel much better now. Uh, <laughs> did you notice Jonathan Kent's uh, accent is completely different? When I'm in a Kansas, live on a pancake, so we come to the mountains. Oh, Clark, you have to keep this side of yourself a secret. I mean, the, the warehouse fight is cool, but like, he gets shot in the head like three times. I'm like, well, what, what, what are the risks here in the fight? He seems pretty in the. How was he going to lose this fight? What he just gets smothered by goons and they shoot him in the mouth hole. Was that the Could happen. the only way he lost? Could happen. Like it, yeah, it looks cool, but then when he's getting, I don't like when he gets shot in the head because it's like, well, if he's at no risk, then he's if he's been shot point blank and it all it does is make him make a noise. What's the risk? Yeah, but he's like, he's been he's been around the block for a few years now. He's armor. I know. Out, yeah. I tell you what I do really like about uh, the one thing I really like. He gets stabbed in the shoulder. Yeah. And he, then he like he looks at the guy and he gets him against the wall and like as revenge he stabs him in the yeah, shoulder. Yeah, it's wicked. I was like, yeah, that's pretty. Cool. It's cool. Okay, so so I know before we move on, one funny thing that is something that is really funny in this is 
obviously they got Martha Kent there and they're like, if anyone comes, you kill her immediately. Batman comes. First of all, they don't kill her immediately. They should have just shot her at that point because then they could have left. Just shoot her and leave because Batman would probably leave as well. He'd probably go, hmm, well, not much I can do here. Yeah. But what makes me laugh is they're like, oh, okay, so Batman's out there. And they've got a fucking Gatling gun, like huge yeah. semi-automatic machine gun pointed at Martha Kent. <laughs> what the fuck is Martha <laughs> Kent going to do? <laughs> Let's talk about a thing I don't like in this film before we, we wrap up. The Death of Superman. Have you ever read The Death of Superman? No. No. It's not a good comic. I know, I know, I know all about it, though. I think I've actually watched yeah. the animated uh, film. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a great comic, but... The point of the death of Superman is Doomsday beats all of the Justice League. Like, he's wiped everyone out, Wonder Woman included, and he is the only one left. And he's like, this is it. You know, it's all down to me. I'm the only one who can stop this person. But in this, he's like, oh, it has to be me. I have to do it. Wonder Woman, on looking back, is handling herself very well in this fight. I would say she is probably doing just as well if not better than uh superman so why not give it to her give her the spear there's no need for you to make this sacrifice i obviously can't give it a batman because he would die immediately batman but batman had contributed nothing. nothing he's like is he is he fires off his little shockwave <laughs> and and the point and then he, like superman and wonder woman are standing there blocking it and you see like batman scoot <laughs> off and he like jumps under a wall <laughs> but i like that though because that is batman like he can't like he can't yeah, fucking course, fight do? doomsday can he yeah yeah and i do like that that is like well, what what is he gonna do and whenever he does come in contact with doomsday he's like got no fucking chance yeah, exactly but I just don't understand why he had to make... Why did he have to make the sacrifice? Why did he need to do that? But it's just the way he's like, it has to be me. I'm the only one. It's not like Wonder Woman is now out of the fight and obviously Batman is just a man. Why do you have to do this? And then obviously the film ends and everyone loves Superman. And I don't understand. Yeah. If I lived in this world, I would say, hmm, well, I'm glad Doomsday's dead. But I'm also glad... Superman's dead, I think, because yeah. he's brought a lot of uh, fucking madness here. Yeah, I'm glad. He's There's a real change back. of heart very quickly, isn't there? It changes very yeah. quickly. He goes from being this someone who a lot of people hate to all of a sudden being a national hero in like a second. But why does everyone? Why does everyone love him now? When before everyone hated him in the previous fight because it was just mayhem and who are these people and. To me, it just seems he's had exactly the same fight. No, it was night. It was night time. It, it was night time. The uh, the island was yeah. uh, uninhabited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the the essence of the fight is the same. Yeah. So why are you like ah? That's the one that changed my mind. No, no. One time, hmm, maybe not. But he's done it twice now, so <laughs> I like him. I just don't think the death of Superman was a story that needed to be told. No. And I think Snyder does something bad here. And he writes so many people into corners, like killing Jimmy Olsen. Why did he have to kill Jimmy Olsen? Yeah. J Jimmy Olsen's a great character. I don't mind him not being in this film because he doesn't suit the tone of the film. But you can save him for someone else that wants to tell a story. Yeah. Why does he have to die? And then, like, you know, you, you've now used up the Death of Superman storyline, which is a storyline that, you know, it could have worked... In the same way Tony Stark's death did. Yeah. You didn't need to do that story right now. I just don't understand it. And then he... he it doesn't matter anyway because within five minutes you learn that he's still... That is so, so it, it, annoying. That end shot is so infuriating, isn't it? Yeah, it's weird because in The Dark Knight re uh, Returns, Batman dies. And then he gets put in the ground and Superman's there at his funeral. But then he hears a heartbeat. And he just smiles and he lets it go because he knows he's coming back. And I thought that was kind of going to be what they did here, but like in a little, like sort of 180 on it. But they don't. It's like, oh, no, no, he's come back. Don't worry about it. It's like, oh, okay. So, yeah. But then, so, you know, we've ripped on this film. I, I kind of like yeah, I, it. Yeah, honestly, I, 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 like I, I don't hate this film. I Genuinely, I do not hate this film. It's just, it's got a lot of stuff. And it's interesting, and it's very interesting to break down. I, I and I'd rather watch this than a lot of other 
MCU films. So, yeah, all in all, it's a bad film, but I kind of you like prefer it. Man of Steel. I prefer Man of Steel. Yeah, like this, definitely yeah. same, absolutely same. Yeah.